Hey everyone, this is Joe again doing my fourth video. I'm actually going over what we went over in the first three videos because I'd like to do some practice problems. So that way I can show you KVL, a little bit of KCL, and how to add uh, voltage. Excuse me, voltages. Or voltage supplies. So basically, we're going to start off with this question asking what VAB is. Uh, now before we get started, I should probably say the definition of what VAB me means is what VAB is actually equal to VA minus VB. <clears throat> we can tell in this right here that uh, we have a plus sign and a minus sign. So this is already plus VA and this is plus VB right here. So this would be VA starting here and then going around would be minus VB. Uh, so you can see the loop that we're going to actually take. Now the first thing we're going to do is get the equations down. Uh, let's see here. So the first one going again in this loop would be minus 5 volts plus 3 volts, which is minus 2 volts, and plus 1 volt. We've got a net of minus one volt here. That's what VAB is. The second one would be five volts plus three volts plus one volt, which is actually nine volts here. Uh, this C would be minus five plus three minus one, which is actually equal to minus three. And then the last one would be, uh, which hasn't been 7 volts yet, so I'm assuming this would be 7 volts. But we have 5 volts, uh, plus 3 volts, minus 1 volt, which is actually 7 volts. So there you have it. That is that answer there. Alright, the second one is KCL. Um, as I explained with the rivers, whatever flows into a node has to come out so whatever rivers flow into uh, a junction whatever flows out of that junction has to be the sum of both of those other two rivers so in other words whatever comes in has to come out so what that means is your input will be equal to your output so we have uh, whatever's coming out we have two a 10 amp and IO so it'd be IO plus 10 amps is going to be equal to 2 amps plus 4 amps, which equals 6 amps. So we just say 6, and then we got 6 minus 10 is equal to IO. So then we got minus 4. So basically minus 4 amps doesn't make any sense at all. Um, basically arbitrarily choosing which way the current flows, if you get a minus sign it actually means it's flowing the other way. So in reality the minus 4 amps isn't flowing down, you have 4 amps of current flowing up. So that is wrong. So this one's finding current I. So if we go ahead and define a zero point or a ground, which would be to our reference to ground here, I can redraw this. Uh, so you got minus three volts. So basically we got minus plus, and you got a four ohms here, and then you have, well, I guess that doesn't matter, but we have uh, plus minus, for the 5 volts, and then you have 6 ohms here, and then that ground that we terminated. Now as you can tell this is all in series, and here's one current I. Now notice I'm using a capital I in this, and the reason why I'm using a capital I is because we're dealing with DC currents. If we were dealing with an AC current, typically I'd use a small I. Now again with KVL here, uh, what we're going to end up doing is taking 
uh, our voltages and seeing what the drop is across these resistors. So basically we know that we're using current I here. Uh, the first thing we'll do is we'll say 0 is equal to minus 3 volts and then you got plus 4 ohms times I. Now remember in Ohm's law that current and resistance is equal to voltage here. So since we're using the units of volts here we need to make this into the unit of volts as well. And we know that R, which is a resistance times I, which is a current, is equal to a voltage. So we have a voltage added to another voltage. And then we have plus our 5 volt source. And then we have plus 6 ohms times I. Uh, in this case, what we have uh, is the 3 volts and the minus, excuse me, the minus 3 volts and the 5 volts which is just 2 volts. But if we move it to the left side where the 0 was, we have minus 2 is going to be equal to 6 plus 4 i is 10 i. Uh, so basically in this case, i is equal to minus 2 tenths, which is equal to minus 0.2 amps. So again, we were wrong in the direction of the current. The current is not going in this direction. That is wrong is actually moving in this direction. Alright, so in this problem is another KVL. What we do is we choose a node again to start at and we move in a loop. And it can, doesn't matter what direction you do it in and the re reason is is because the sum of all voltages will equal zero. Now in this case you can see two voltages, uh, 12 volts and 8 volts. These are actual units of voltage that are being produced. So in, you can think of these circles as batteries. These batteries are always here. It is a production of a voltage. Now the squares or rectangles with a plus and minus 10, this doesn't mean there's 10 volts here. What this means is if this were a resistor, 10 volts is going to drop across this resistor. So in this case we have 12 volts and it's going to go across this resistor and after this resistor drops 10 volts you're only going to have 2 volts here. That's what that means. So in this case again we can redraw our circuit if we're using this as a reference and we can change the colors to maybe red here. So we have minus 12 volts, and then you got plus 10 volts, uh, and then you got plus 8 volts, and then you got minus V is equal to 0. Move V to the other side, so you got V is equal to, see, 8, 10, so then you got minus 2, and you got plus 6, so you got 6 volts here. That's what that was equal. That was pretty simple. And then here's a question I'll pose to you guys. I haven't gone over power, um, but you can kind of think about this outside of the power. Uh, obviously something will happen. What will decrease um, if you decrease the value of R3? We can do this in terms of numbers or we can do it in terms of just thinking about it. However you want to pose this question. Uh, you can leave your comments in the below and what I'll do is go over this in the next video after I describe a little bit more about what power is and then also I want to kind of talk about equivalencies so usually you'll have like an R equivalent and what that is is say you have your iPhone and you plug it in well your whole iPhone as a unit is going to have a resistance and we can model the whole iPhone as the value of what that resistance is. Um, and like I talked about in the beginning, we can figure out how much power or what your iPhone needs. Uh, also, not Hayden, but Android devices as well would work. So, till next time, and I'll talk to you later.